Hi guys, it's Chris at Colton Crown and back at my cider desk with some more cider to try and something else, cheese as well. Look, I've got a Tunworth. I've got a Tunworth to try. We'll talk about that in a bit. And I've got another bit of cheese because it's going with another of my Smith Hain delivery, my bottles. This is the 2021 Reserve. You can tell it's Reserve because there's a pink label. Well, also because it says Reserve on it. What does it say on the back? It says... Pétion Naturel, mainly keeved. So obviously some non-keeved cider blended with it. Apples are grown and hand harvested at Smith Hain Farm. From, uh, Smith Hain from unsprayed orchards. Yarlington Mill, 48%. Dabon at 27%. So that's a uh, bitter sharp, sorry, bittersweet, bittersweet. Browns, 20%. Bitter sharp or a sharp? I think it's a sharp, it's a sharp. Michelin, fill barrel sweet copping, 5%. So Michelin, uh, bittersweet. Fill barrel sweet copping, can't remember. Sweet copping, I think it's probably dessert, like sweet. Fill barrel, can't remember. I'll put it on the screen. Um, 4.5% because it is key, so it's got natural sugars in it. Looking forward to trying it. And key ciders are synonymous with uh, the west coast of France, so Normandy, Brittany. And what's also synonymous with Normandy is cheese, and it's particularly camembert. It's the home of camembert. So we'll have something which is a camembert with it. You can call anything a camembert if you want. The word camembert isn't protected. If it says camembert de Normandie on it, that's the ELC, that's protected. But you can put camembert and protect anything. You could call the cheddar a camembert if you wanted. I mean, it's a stupid thing to do, but you could. Um, but this is uh, uh, an English iteration. Um, so uh, two ladies called Julie and Stacey started making this cheese 20 odd years ago in Hampshire. Um, Julie now has gone and done her own thing. She makes a cheese called St. Jude which you may have seen, I may not. Uh, but what they wanted to make was a camembert, because I like camembert, but they didn't want to call it camembert, camembert they called it Tunworth. Uh, Tunworth isn't a local village to where it's made. It, it's a nearby village to where it's made. But the village where they were, they hated the landlord, so they didn't want to give him the, the you know, didn't want to name it after the village and give him, like, the glory. So they named it after another village instead, Tunworth, um, from Hampshire Cheese Company. So there you go. And I happen to know these are pretty ripe. I actually got this. I've done a couple of events this week with my friend Ned, Ned the Cheesemonger, who wrote A Cheesemonger's History of the British Isles. Did some events with him this week, and there was some cheese left over, this being one of them, so I nicked it. I didn't really nick it. I said, can I have a bit of cheese? I went, yeah, all right. So, I have to know it's pretty strong punishment, and I don't know if you recall, if you saw the film with the uh, Camembert Inn from the supermarket that was raw milk. This is actually pasteurized, but I don't think you see it. See the sort of russety, coppery, rusty sort of coloring on it? There's other things going on on this cheese. It isn't just white mould. You've got some yeasts and some bacteria probably as well. And it's going to be much more interesting things. How gnarly and wrinkled it is at the side. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. We had a camembert as well, but it was way too young. I might use that as another tasting just to show the difference. But this, I know for a fact, is on the money, super ripe, garlicky, cabbagey, all the things you want. A bit meaty, maybe. Right. And all that stuff's gonna go well with the residual sugar in this keep side. So let's open it and try it. We like the yarn to mill single variety. I was trying, I was looking on the back to see what the varieties were in it, in the variety, in the single variety yarn to mill, and I couldn't see them. I was like, oh, I don't know what's in it. Started guessing what was in it, and it was called yarn to mill. What an idiot. Right, let's see how fizzy this one is. The last one's pretty fizzy. Whoop. Pop. Morgan gun. But lovely. I mean, the, look at that. Same thing happened yesterday. It popped brilliantly, but then didn't form over. That is a well smoking gun, that is. Let's pour it out into a, one of our proper, our proper tasting glasses, which always look dirty, but they're not actually dirty. It's come out of my washing machine, my dishwasher, uh, but for some reason it still has stains on it. It's a new dishwasher as well. How annoying. Right. So, first off, let's examine the colour. Bubbles are good. Bubbles are good. Bub bub bubbles were great in the last one as well. Let's get a piece of paper from the printer. And hold it up. So there you go. Look at that beautiful amber. It's amber. That is it's gorgeous. Bit hazy, unfiltered. Lovely fine bubbles rising to the top there. Let's give it a sniff. Ah, oh, smells like a prop side of that. It smells great. Oh, um, it's got a bit more hints of funkiness. Just a tiny bit, but it's great. It smells great. Again, there's that sweet apple, that baked apple, brown sugar, butter, apple, sauteed or baked. It's got that for days. It's great. 
but less of the tartar -ta -ta, less of that caramelized sort of um less of that dark that sort of pastry character you get with a tartar -ta -ta, and that sort of burnt character it doesn't really have that too much just that brilliant baked apple character it's tasty Mousse is great again. Lovely bubbles. Got some residual sugar. I don't think it's got as much residual sugar as the Yarlington Mill had, but it's there, but it says mostly keeved. Therefore, we can assume that it's been had that. Some dry side has been added to it. Um, maybe it's been dosed actually with apple juice for this, to get the sparkle. Not sure. Not sure. So it's pet nap, so bottled before the end of fermentation to get the fizz in the bottle. Um, but it's great. Really good. Um, there's a there's like an alkaline, slight sort of alkaline character on the middle of the palate. Mm. But that kind of sweet baked apple character comes through, or like eating apple, dessert apple character comes through as well on the palate. Um, this feels lighter in character than the single variety Yalton Mill, uh, but it has got a um, browns in, which is a sharp. So it's not going to be quite as tannic because it's got low tannin uh, apples blended in with it. Um, but I'll tell you what, it's fab. It's fab. It is more of a, it's a lighter beverage, but it's still a delicious beverage. So let's try it with some cheese. Mm. <sighs> cheese knife. Boom. Boom. Okay. So let's, let's extract this section of cheese. So here it is. Let's extract that. Boom. So there you go. Yeah, almost no chalk line at all. It's right all the way to the centre. There's a border terrier whining in the background. Stop whining, Reggie. What's wrong with you, Phil? So there you go. Right almost to the centre. Maybe the merest hint, the merest suggestion of a chalk line still left in the middle. Hint of acidity. I like that. The acidity cuts to the fat. It's like having an extra a different sort of cheese mixed in to bring balance in the same way that you need acidity in, in cider and you need it in wine. Otherwise, it's, it's cloying. Same with cheese, same with camembert. I'm going to cut a slightly smaller bit to try that. Let's do it. Oh. So don't look out the fridge. It's a bit cold. But actually, it's not as bang in your face as I thought it was going to be. The rind has developed a hint of bitterness. I love rinds, I always eat the rind. Just got the mere tint of bitterness about it, which isn't perfect. However, the paste in the middle, there's that brothy, gar that wild garlicky cabbagey thing, which I so love, but I think they use French starter cultures, the same cultures, the same lactic acid bacteria, and so forth that are used in making French camembert. So they've got using the same starters, which will give you these flavors. If you have an industrial uh, camembert, it tastes of nothing, it's like salted butter. And, and sort of milk, like cooked milk. That's kind of the only flavours you get, really. Maybe some mushroomy character off the, the penicillium candidum, the white mould on the outside. Um, but it's top, it's top. But I think the sweetness in that, it's got a reasonable salt. It's not massively saltiness, but it's got, like I said, it's like brothy, like a bouillon sort of character. But the sweetness of that with the salt and that slightly bit, bit of rind should work really well. Mmm. Yeah, it does. It works well. I think the Yarlton would have been better with it though. I think it had a bit more sweetness and felt a bit bigger and richer. And that's quite a beefy camembert style. It's quite a beefy Tunworth. Um, having said that though, yeah, boom. I mean, how bad can it be? That and that, very nice together. Very nice together indeed. Enjoying the Smithane. I love Keep Cider, enjoying their stuff. I actually will when I spoke to him at the um, Will Cider Maker at the uh, Cider Salon. said how much he enjoyed my cheese films as well. Well, thank you, Will. This one's for you. I did some great cheese with one of your great ciders. Thank you for sending them to me. And thank you all for joining me at the Cider Desk. I hope you join me again. But until that time, cheers. <laughs>